Now for today's case study webinar, I'd like to welcome, welcome Christian Beats. Christian has been a, a great supporter, a friend of the Documentary Business Newsletter. He's been just such an active producer, a leader of the unscripted production community in Germany. Uh, Christian's based in Berlin. It's great to have you here on this case study uh, webinar, Christian. Thank you, Peter, for inviting me. So we're going to get into our project for today, which is the making, uh, the development, the production, the distribution of Juan Carlos, Downfall of a King. Uh, we've just had the, I guess, the, the, uh, all the attention paid to the good King Charles or the Charles who is striving to be good in people's imagination. And then, you know, at the same time, you release a film about the bad king. It's a story full of scandal and um, corruption and more. So tell us, how did you decide to develop this story? Um, I was approached by, by an author from Spain. Uh, uh, it was at the Berlinale uh, three years ago when we met at uh, an event when the Hillary Clinton series came out. And, um, and he's a very polite man, it's Pedro Padillo, um, who is a journalist filmmaker and is working for the Film Fund in Mallorca. And he was asking me, Christian, are you interested in the Spanish King Juan Carlos? You know, and then the beginning, you know, he's a very polite guy and was saying uh, yes and no, but we have to understand we don't do this kind of films, this, this kind of films, royalty films, you know, um, praising, you know, the, the, the crown or whatever, what kind of king or princes and so on. So he, he, he called me again and um, after a while I understood that he had in mind to tell the dark side of the Spanish king. And at this time, I have to say, I was a little bit naive. I, I, I didn't know how dark this story could be. So what are the highlights? Why is it dark? You know, um, if it's, uh, there's also a bright side of, of the King Juan Carlos. So he was, you know, <clears throat> he was the King who brought Spain into Europe, to Europe and, he brought democracy uh, to Spain after, you know, they, um, and he was a young dynamic king who did sports, you know, who, who looks good and, and so on. And in he Spain, a family, right? he had a lovely family, very photogenic. Of course. Yeah. And, and you know, and, and there were rumors that he had a lot of love affairs. You know, one of his closest friends was saying, you know, there might be 5,000 love affairs. So in, in Spain, I was quite proud of him. And this is so <laughs> the man's world. So this was, um, this is only one, one side, but, but he, you know, he did, he built a, a huge corruption system in Spain, which is, interwoven between politics, economics, and the New York Times is writing about that it might be 1.8 billion, what he put, put apart. And, um, and I was really interested in the system of this Spanish King Juan Carlos. And did you have any resistance to taking on the story when you decided to focus on it? I mean, states don't really like to have their dirty laundry aired uh, on global TV networks. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So, so um, how we started that. So, you know, after I said, okay, I'm interested in the story, but I don't know enough about it. Let's go to Madrid and let's do interviews with every journalist, investigative journalist um, who wrote articles uh, or books about the king and um, let's go there for four days and when, let, let's do a bunch of interviews. So, so we did between 15, 20 interviews in three to four days um, to get a better understanding, um, to get the state of the art, you know, where are the investigative journalists right now um, in digging uh, in this, yeah, in, in this 
in this corruption system. And um, it started that, you know, during, during the first interviews, we, we got calls, you know, mystery calls where they were, somebody was saying, you know, we're listening to you, uh, what, what, what are you looking for? And be careful, be careful. So, so at this time, still, I was naive and said, hey, 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 come on, calm down, you know, because people was called, some, some of our journalists were called and said, Let, let's keep going on, you know. Um, so we, we went back to Germany, we analyzed all the interviews and, and from there we said, oh, let's go on the next round. So the next round is to get people in front of the camera who were close friends of him, you know, who, who knew him very well um, and also to try to get him himself, you know, in front of the camera. So um, through the help of, of many journalists in Spain, you know, we got a lot of contacts, we called them and, and we had meetings. And, and after a while, um, we, we did the first interviews with, you know, friends, school friends of Juan Carlos, you know, who knew him as a child. Uh, politicians like Azna, you know, uh, or his closest friends like, like, Mario Conde, who is a kind of finance minister with head of bank, and he was dealing for him, you know, all the financial things that he did abroad. Um, he even went for the king seven years in jail, you know, um, but still he's a friend, you know, of the king. He's very proud of that. So we, we find a lot of really, really characters which are very interesting and the, the closest circle around the king. Sorry. You're getting the story together, you're getting interviews, pushback. At what point did you feel you had enough material to pitch a funder? I mean, all of this <clears throat> was speculative to date, correct? That's correct, yeah. Um, this was a process. Um, you know, when, when, when I created the idea and I said, Let, let's do it, you know, let's, let's start, I, I started also to talk to different clients, you know, I, I thought, of course, this is, um, first of all, you know, I, I'm doing a lot of international co-productions with Spain as well. So I called my friends in Spain, you know, uh, and um, I talked to them, like, like really all the streamers and, and, and pay TV and, and everybody was telling me, you know, Christian, really, really interesting. I, I love the story, but I can't do it. So I said, why? You know, you, you will get your audience, you know, um, it's amazing. You have everything there. You have money, you have sex, you know, you, you have secret services. Um, you have so many layers in it and which are also, you know, quite entertaining in a way. And um, so at this time I didn't get it. So, so then I thought, okay, let, let's talk to the streamers. So I was uh, in contact with Netflix and the way I, interested immediately they're saying you know wow what a story do you get access you know and said yeah let me go for it you know i um i'm working on that and i i started the production and and then after after six months i got in contact with the former lover of the king corinna sein zu wittgenstein they were a couple more than seven years, you know, they stayed together near the palace. They were very, very close in the circle. Everybody knew about it, but not the bigger audience, you know. And she, she got, you have to know that she got uh, a present, a present of 65 million euros, around about $100,000. Um, oh, no, no, million, million, not 100,000, million. And, and, um, and she's, you know, she was very close to him. The king was asking her if she wants to be the new queen. And then, you know, he was set up everything for that already. And then everything changed, you know, they- He they, was betrayed. They were betrayed. Um, and she got a lot of pressure. So he's, she's like, like, I wouldn't say a whistleblower, but, but, you know, she was with him seven years, very close every day based together. And she went 
in front of the camera because she was afraid of the king and the pressure that she got after you know they were divorced and um so this was a key player and at this time you know um yeah netflix was more interested in it and uh but after a while when they realized mm, this gets really a sensitive topic maybe too polit too much politics involved uh, they said you know it's nothing for us, you know, we, 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 we don't do politics. Well, it's interesting you say that because we did a case study on the Dominique Strauss-Kahn case, uh, room, what is it, 1809, I can't remember the room number, where he was trapped in a t terrible scandal in, uh, in New York. Yeah. That was, I think Netflix's first uh, French documentary series and it was right down the middle of, uh, so close to the King, King Juan Carlos story. I guess they just decided that this one wasn't quite right for them. Yeah, and I also think times changed, you know, the times changed, uh, especially what we're seeing, you know, what, what kind of appetite that Netflix has this, these days. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it's going more in kind of so Netflix pulls out and then you pitch to Sky, is that correct? Yeah, I pitched it to, to, to the CDF, to the second uh, channel in Germany, which is the biggest uh, public broadcaster who were interested in the beginning. And or they, they sent already an offer. And then I thought, okay, let's do a combination with a, with a pay TV channel, like, like Sky. Can, uh, clear, can I be clear about the process here? You must have invested several tens of thousands of dollars. More than that, yeah. Much more. Six figures, well over six figures. Yeah. So that was Gavruda Beats investment <laughs> in developing and shooting and creating a compelling story. At that point, you go to ZDF, after which you decide to broaden the partnership and you go to Sky. Did I summarize correctly? Yeah, you summarize it correctly. Yeah, yeah. This is how we work when we do this kind of stories, because I think you you need to be open minded. You don't know what kind of access you get, and if you get access to to real players, um, it's growing. You know, when I got the access to his closest friends and enemies, I thought, okay, now we could tell a series, a documentary series, a four part series. If you don't get the access, that might be only a one-off, you know, might maybe an hour, or whatever. So it's more kind of reportage because you have only third-part people, like journalists, you know, who are talking about it, but you don't have a real experience in it. So, so you have to take the risk. Um, is there a German fund that supports you during the development process, or is it com entirely your commercial risk? They did so. So we we um, we applied for for a development fund at Berlin, the Ber Berlin um, Medium Board um, mm -hmm. Fund, who was supporting us. Um, it was I would say you know to give out the figures when when we signed the contract later on with, with um, Sky we we already you know spent six hundred thousand you know in the production um the development fund was around about 50k 50k so it was a fraction it was a fraction but it helped a lot you know because you knew uh you have somebody behind you at least you know who believes in the project and so you, you believe <laughs> to go go on and um yeah, it always helps, you know, to, to have this kind of development funds in the beginning. It also, it gives you uh, an imprimatur, doesn't it? It gives you uh, uh, the, 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 the sign off from an authority that this is a project that's worth, uh, worth backing. Um, so you pull the deal together. What's, what's the timeline we're looking at? And by the way, Christian, uh, we work with you and your team to compile all this information in a detailed case study, which is published in Documentary Business in my newsletter. And we did a previous case study with you about the cleaners, which you took to Sundance, which was also a very risky project. Anyway, without going on about that, what was the timeline from concept to delivery? Um, 
when I was approached, it's around about three years ago. And you know what? Today we will premiere in Spain with the series. You know, after three years, you know, we are there. Um, yeah, and the production time was around about, I would say, two years. So two and some months. Was the series, the final version, heavily lawyered? It's very, very complicated to tell these investigative stories uh, in a kind of, you know, when you have so many victims in it, uh, people talking to, to you because everybody has his own agenda. Yeah. It's like a house of cards series, you know? Um, and it's also when you go through the series through the four parts, you see that faces are changing, you know, perspectives are changing. So you have to be very careful what, what you could put in this kind of in very political investigative stories and whatnot. So, so we had a lot of lawyers around us and we, we, we had a very good law firm who's specialized in this kind of films um, and investigative stories and, and documentaries. So it's mm. very complicated. It's Harve, uh, von Harve and Fai, Christoph Fai. Who, who lead that and he worked already with Snowden, you know, he released so many very difficult documentaries. Um, he's amazing. So you delivered um, just quite recently and did you create multiple versions? So we've got Not yet. By length, two, two questions, I guess, by length and by market. Did you create different versions for each market, different editorial versions as distinct from from dubs and subtitles? Um, going back with the negotiation with CDF, so they, they, they didn't work out because Sky, Sky Studios in London, you know, realized the potential of the project and they, they would love to have it as a series because they saw these multi-layered stories in it and for, for this kind of projects you, you need to tell them in, in, a, in a series because they're quite complex and very entertaining at the same time. So NBC, you came on board as well. Before that, we were in negotiations. You know, we, we talked to different, you know, distributors like Fremantle or we had meetings with Doc Wolf. Um, some sent us an offer and some said, you know, we want to have it all. So we tried to figure out, you know, who would be the best partner. And I have to say, for this kind of film, it's really, really great partner to have Sky, Sky and Sky Studios uh, behind you because they are already an international network. Mm -hmm. They are in Germany, in Italy, and in UK. And with NBCU, they have also all the Showtime channels. Yep. For example, today we are at Sky Showtime in Spain with the series. So you're now already in what, 10 or 12 markets, major markets and rolling out to more. Yeah, we, we were rolling out it in more than 25 countries uh, together with NBCU and, and Sky Studios. So let's finish on the money. Uh, what was the total budget? The budget was around about 2.5 million so that we, we had to spend and we, we have an contract with NBCU for distribution so where we get our share when they sell it so it's deficit financed you're you're, wor you're working out your deficit yeah yes yeah well Christian uh, this is a really great case study there's a lot more detail and I could talk to you about the ins and outs I'd, uh, I'm, I, I just recommend the story to everybody it's the what is it the month of kings isn't it with coronations and scandals so it's really fascinating that you've opened up Gabruda Beats and this story to, to our industry because these case studies, I think, are both incredibly inspiring and really powerful cautionary tales. So huge project, well done. Great to have you on board and, uh, thank, and I'll see you at Sunnyside. Yeah, we see us at Sunnyside. Great. Thank you so much for inviting me again after the cleaners. And it's always a pleasure to be with you and to share all the information with our colleagues, you know, who love documentaries. I will, I'm sure the next one will, will do the same. Thank you, Christian. Thank you so much.